No Man's Sky is one of the biggest games you can play right now, with a map that's just unbelievably vast. The game's now getting on a bit, but one could say it ages like fine wine, as updates have made it near unrecognisable from its release form. In this video, we'll unpick everything the game has to offer, so stick around till the end to see if it's for you and if it's worth buying. Now first and foremost, No Man's Sky is a space exploration game that takes place in a universe with this many planets. Yeah, it's flipping huge. Survival will also be a key theme throughout your adventures, but especially when you start out. You'll begin stranded on a planet where you'll have to repair your ship and learn the ropes of your life support systems, which you'll need to keep topped up with natural resources. These resources are a big part of the game, being the pillars upon which both the economy and crafting is built upon. More on that soon. First though, here's what you get in terms of story, or maybe what you don't get, because the story element of No Man's Sky isn't very significant. In fact, you don't even get any dialogue. The whole narrative is delivered by text that you'll actually have to read. I know. Don't be phased though, because A, it's not as bad as you think, and B, its main function is a tutorial anyway. But my god, it's even shit at that. In all seriousness though, No Man's Sky doesn't need a proper story. In fact, a story that wasn't near perfect just wouldn't do the rest of it justice. Let's take a look at the crafting. Crafting in No Man's Sky is fundamentally pretty well done. In a Minecraft on severe steroids-like fashion, everything can be mined. But actually everything, because that includes the ground, which can even be terraformed. You'll find different resources on different planets, so crafting something new often requires just a short trip across your solar system. A select few materials are also found exclusively in space, and are extracted delicately like so. Don't think about it too much. All your tools, systems and various ship boosters require fueling often through crafting, so stocking up and preparing well before going too far from your base is beneficial, and I really enjoyed this aspect. Talking of your base, this will go from a makeshift shack to your pride and joy. It's another element that's been executed really well. When you start out, you'll be limited by most building pieces being locked, as well as a lack of resources to craft the damn things anyway. Your initial exploration will also have you constantly on the move, but you'll soon progress and need a proper base to store inventory and make the most of all the cool tech you'll unlock. This is where it gets seriously fun, because the scope for building in this game is pretty huge, and there's cool stuff for the inside too. As I mentioned, there's loads of unlockables, from lights to resource farms and teleporters, with everything needing a power source also. You can feed a generator with carbon, but progression will see you switch to solar panels and batteries. Aren't we sustainable? Thanks to the aforementioned teleporters, it's perfectly viable to set up multiple bases too, kind of necessary when the game is this freaking big. Furthermore, there's a creative mode if you just want to build, without being limited by your resources or faffing with crafting. Now before we take a look at the space stations, economy and multiplayer, this video has been sponsored by Gamavo.com, who are kindly giving you an extra 10% off their already very competitive price for No Man's Sky, with code AGR10. They've got virtually every game you can think of across all platforms, and even have a subscription service to get massive discounts, free games, entries to exclusive giveaways and priority support. Oh yeah, and it's just 88p for your first month. On top of that, they're rated excellent on Trustpilot, so your game purchases are safe with them. Head to the link in the description to pick up No Man's Sky or browse the other games they've got on offer, and don't forget your extra 10% off. But back to the review. When you're not at one of your bases, you'll likely be travelling around your star system, a solar system containing up to six planets. Each system also has a space station, a funky looking hub for upgrades, missions and trading. First and foremost, you can upgrade and tune all your weapons, tools, ships and even your exosuit. This could be anything from more inventory space to higher damage or being able to use your jetpack for longer. You can also pick up missions to earn one of the three in-game currencies and use a trade terminal to buy and sell resources, because the game pretty much has its own commodity stock market. Depending on your difficulty, you'll be able to buy some or nearly all of the game's resources for a price that will fluctuate based on the economy of the system you're in. Pretty clever. You can of course sell the resources you've mined yourself too, and this ultimately makes for a very functional game economy. But what's the point of having this if there's no cool ship to buy? Well, don't worry, No Man's Sky has us covered here. Of course, you can buy ships until your heart's content, with different types being good for different things. There's also multiple ship classes, so you can still feel poor after many hours of grinding for one. The highlight for me though are freighters. These huge motherfuckers are about as Star Wars as you can get, with multiple bays for ships that you can literally fly in to park. Unsurprisingly, they don't come cheap, but once you have one, you can build inside it to turn it into a mobile base. It can be warped across and between star systems and even summoned to orbit the planet you're on, possibly my favourite feature. You can also buy supporting ships for your freighter called frigates. There are different types for different roles, because you send them out on expeditions as a way to passively make money and find resources. You'll have to maintain them with fuel and repairs, and it's worth building up your fleet so you can safely send them on harder missions and run multiple at once. 
Another thing that can be summoned is the Anomaly, another space station sort of thing that's just bigger and contains other real players. Yes, this shit is multiplayer too. Now you may be wondering how a game with this many worlds can have an even remotely functional online system, because no, you're not going to run into someone by accident. How they've handled it though is through a hub that for you exists exactly where you summoned it, but every other player is also under this illusion for their own position. Inside the Anomaly you'll find loads of other players who you can group up with to complete missions together. If you want to play with friends you can do that in a group of up to four to complete missions, find resources and visit each other's bases as a team. Also any planets you discover for the first time, which will be a lot of them, can be renamed for all future travellers to see, and yes you can rely on gamers to take the absolute piss. Overall though the multiplayer has been very well implemented, in fact this is one of the things that's improved most since launch, with full crossplay even available on Nintendo Switch. Another aspect that's been developed greatly since launch is the combat, because while this game is in no way a shooter, some planets will have hostile sentinel forces, so guns, if you could even call them that, are needed occasionally. Perhaps holding the combat back though is the game's age rating of Peggy 7. Even Smash Bros for the Wii is a fucking 12. Age limitations aside though, No Man's Sky does what it can to include a bit of shooting action, although I still feel like it's a bit of an afterthought. That said, it's far from the focus point of the game, and space combat is a lot better too. You'll encounter pirates and sentinel ships periodically, with your hyperdrive getting disabled so you can't just run away. There's a decent bit to think about when you're in a dogfight, you'll have multiple weapons on board and you must keep your shields topped up also. Especially when you're up against multiple ships it can be quite challenging, with your inventory potentially on the line depending on your difficulty mode. Something that could help you out though is your squadron. This is another all new feature added post launch that lets you summon your team of fighters to defend you and attack the enemy. You have to assemble the team yourself, searching for and recruiting the pilots, with different levels of pilots to find too. Another notable mention is the Exocrafts, a range of vehicles that you can unlock, build and upgrade to more easily explore planets from the ground. Updates have also brought us the Exomech, a really badass looking and very functional exosuit. The final point that you should really take away is that No Man's Sky has so much to offer that within that you can make it the game you want. There's enough to do that you can mostly disregard any bits you don't enjoy as much, maybe the combat, but there's still sufficient depth left over in other areas that you can really pour your time into them, whether that be the base building, pure exploration or the vehicles and ships. The developers have even gone so far as to add a customizable gameplay mode so you can set world parameters based on your playstyle. The pacing is also completely up to you, once you get through the tutorial bit of the story you're set up well enough to pretty much do what you want. You can bang out bounty missions, follow the story or get right to money farming for quick progression, it really is up to you. The multiplayer also does a huge amount for replayability, in fact replayability is a weird one because it's one of those games where you really just can't keep going. Its graphical offering also doesn't get old. With the game now very well optimised for next gen consoles it does look amazing and thanks to how good the procedural generation tech is, new planets really can give you environment that you've never seen before. And I should stress that it's not just small things made different between planets so the developers can say they're all unique, it really is like you're playing in a different galaxy sometimes. Oh wait. Overall then, No Man's Sky brings a huge amount of content to the table. It's only thanks to updates that I could be so positive about nearly all aspects of the game. Without them, this would have been a very different video. If you like exploration, crafting, survival, building or space combat, then my advice is just buy it. Even if one of those elements would usually put you off, here it just doesn't matter because this game is just so complete in almost every area, something that's very hard to say about most games in 2023. Anyway, that's all for this video, if you have enjoyed it or found it useful, then a like or even a sub would be absolutely amazing. But that's all, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.